Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about 10 underrated and underused keyboard shortcuts. Now, there's actually going to be a few more than 10, but some of them are bonuses, and some of them I just kind of had to bundle together because it made sense. So let's keep going and get into the 10 keyboard shortcuts. Now, the first bonus keyboard shortcut I'm going to give you, not counting toward the 10, is Command Option K. And if you look at that, it opens up the keyboard shortcut dialog. So you could search for keyboard shortcuts and set your own custom keyboard shortcuts as well. Under menus, that's Premiere Pro keyboard shortcuts, command option K. So let's get started on the first shortcut, and that is the ripple trim previous and next edit to playhead. Now, this is really helpful, especially at the rough cut stage, to be able to quickly jump through your shots and create a rough cut. So for instance, in this shot, I want to cut into the shot after he takes his arm down. So I'll wait till he takes his arm down right around here, and I'll hit the Q key to trim the head of that shot to my playhead. And then I want to cut out of the shot before he puts his arm back up and looks at the wall. So right around here, I'll hit the W key to trim the tail to the playhead. Do the same thing in here, Q for the head, W for the tail. Here, I'll do the same thing. I want to cut into the shot after he's already picked it up from the car and he's looking away from the car, so Q. And I want to cut out of the shot before he picks up the next bag, so I'll hit W. So as you can see, it's a really quick way to be able to cut through shots quickly. Now, it will work on multiple tracks and if you look right here, the way it works is because these all have the same endpoint, if I hit Q, it'll trim all of them together. Now the endpoint, because they all end in different places, it will base the trim on the shortest clip. So if I hit W, you'll notice it trimmed it based on track one. Again, I'll hit W because that was the shortest of the group and then relatively trimmed all of the other ones. Now the second tip is how to slip move and trim with the keyboard. So a lot of you guys probably know some of these, but not all of them. And I find the one that a lot of people don't know is how to slip with the keyboard. And this only works from the arrow tool, not the slip tool. So what I'm gonna do is select the clip, and I know at another part of this clip, I could actually see the driver of this tractor more. So if I hit command and option, and use the right arrow, I'm actually headed toward that direction of the clip. And if I want to move faster, I could hold Command, Option, Shift, and right arrow and get me over to that part of the clip. So you notice I slipped without ever going to the slip tool and without ever leaving the keyboard. The other thing I could do is move the clip. So if I hit Command, right arrow, that will move the clip to the right, and Command, left arrow will move it left. I could also trim by clicking on an edit point or selecting with the keyboard, of course, and hitting Option, and left arrow will trim it to the left, and option and right arrow will bring it to the right. I can also move the clip up and down with option up arrow. So even though moving clip left and right is command right and left, to move it up and down is option up and down. So that's how to slip, move, and trim with the keyboard. Now the third thing I want to discuss is a little bit more general, and that's your panel windows. And you could access all of them by going to the window menu, or just merely by finding them. So let's say I want to access the media browser, I can find it and click it. But if I want to do that with the keyboard, I could hit Shift 8 to go to the media browser. So let me go through a few of the ones that I use fairly often. Shift 1 would be the project panel, and now you'll notice that's selected, and I can use my arrow keys to navigate around the project panel. If I hit Shift 2, that's the source monitor. And this one's actually unique because the source monitor in Premiere Pro can host several clips at the same time. So if I click there, you'll see I have all of these clips, and these are the clips that I've opened in my edit session. So if I hit Shift 2, it will cycle between all of my open clips and that's anything that I've opened in the source monitor. If I hit Shift 3 for the timeline panel, it will do similar and cycle between the open timeline panels. If I hit Shift 5, that will take me to my effects control, and that's a window I use a lot, so that one's really helpful to know. Shift 8, as I said before, is the media browser, and of course there's several others, but I just named some of the ones that I use most often. Let's go into the fourth keyboard shortcut, and that is for trim edit. Now, a lot of people will do trims by 
using the trim tool, maybe deleting the gap, or even using a ripple or roll edit as well. What the trim edit does is it lets you loop your edit point while you're trimming. So you'll notice what I did there was I hit T and the playhead jumped to my edit point. Now let me do that again. You don't have to be on an edit point, you just have to be near one. So I'll move it near this edit point and if I hit T it will jump back to it. Again, it will jump to the closest edit point. If I hit play, it'll loop that edit point. But the cool thing is I can use option and right arrow, which is the keyboard shortcut to trim with your keyboard, as I just showed you in the last section. And now I'm trimming while looping my edit point. So you can dynamically see how it's affecting your edit. I can also add option shift to do it in larger increments. Now the other keyboard shortcut you're going to want to know here is Control T. So if I hit Control T, it will change and cycle through my edit types. You'll see if you look at the timeline, it's going from, let me just make this track bigger so you guys can see that icon a little bigger. Right now it's a ripple edit. Right now it's a trim. Right now it's a trim in the other direction, roll, ripple in the other direction, etc. So you can just toggle between all your different edit types. And now if I hit play, it will loop that edit. If I hit option right, it's going to extend that clip while dragging my timeline down while continuously looping to show me how that affects my edit. Now I could also use J, K, and L. If I hit J, it'll move backwards. And if I hit K, it will take me to the point at which I stop. So let me show you that again. I'll hit J and I hit K when he puts his hands together. And now it moved the edit point there. Same with L. If I hit L, it'll move forward and I want it to go K right there when he's about to touch the wall. And hitting K will basically lock the edit point in. So let's move on to the fifth tip and that's adjusting clip volume with the keyboard. Now an important thing to do here is go to the wrench icon and make sure show audio keyframes is on and that'll show you these rubber bands. Of course I could click and drag on any one of these but if I want to do it with the keyboard I can use my bracket keys. To the right will make it higher on my right bracket and to the left will make it lower. Now if you only want to do it on a specific clip you can come select that clip and use your left and right bracket and it will only affect that clip. You'll notice these other clips aren't being adjusted. Takes me to my sixth keyboard shortcut and that's selecting clips with the keyboard. So to select clips of course you could click on them and that lets me see the effects control for that specific clip. So if I click here you'll see a fast blur of 32. If I click here you'll see a fast blur of 96. But what if I'm doing a color correct on my whole timeline and I don't want to constantly be going to the mouse? Well, I could hit the command down arrow and that will take me to and select my next clip in the edit. Command down arrow will do it again. Command up will go backward. And if you look at the effects control, you'll notice the fast blur being updated each time I hit it. So if I want to bring this one to 10, then hit command down, bring this one to 10, hit command down, bring this one to 10. I quickly went between all of them without having to click into the timeline each time. The next keyboard shortcut I want to talk about is replacing a clip while doing a match frame. Now, if I go to my project panel and I navigate to a clip I have called clip B, you'll notice I have these two clips. There's clip A and clip B here. You'll notice clip A is at the time code of four seconds, 20 frames. Now let's say I want to replace it with clip B but maintain that same time code. So if I move my playhead over to the 4 seconds and 20 frames, a lot of you would think to do option and drag the clip over the other one to replace it. And you'll notice that did replace it, but the time code is now at zero. So I'm going to undo that, and this time I'm going to hold option and shift, and that's the key. Holding option and shift will do a replace clip and a match frame to the playhead. So watch now, option, shift, drag, and now it's at four seconds, 20 frames. Now let's go to another point in the clip. It doesn't have to be the beginning of the clip. We'll go to 519 in clip B, and now I'll go to clip A, find 519, and I'm just doing that because in theory I want to replace to the same exact time code, and this time I'll hold option and shift, as I said, 
and now you'll notice it's still at 519 but it's been replaced with clip A and that would maintain any effects I already had on the clips it would also maintain crossfades any scale position things like that would all be maintained and it makes it a nice easy way to replace one clip with the other moving on we have the shortcut to show video and audio keyframes so I showed you a few movies ago with nudging clip volume how sometimes you want to go into this wrench menu to show your audio and video keyframes. And I should mention that from this point forward, all of these keyboard shortcuts I'm going to discuss are custom shortcuts, meaning I set them up. They're not set up with anything by default, but you can customize them to whatever you think is appropriate. So if I hit Command Option K and I search for Show Video Keyframes, you'll see I set it to Control K. If I go to show audio keyframes I set it to control shift K so let me hit OK control shift K you'll notice there go my audio keyframes shut off there they are on again let me drag this up so you could see it a little better control shift K will shut that on and off control K will do my video keyframes on and off and the reason I like to use this is because a lot of the times I'll have a title that I want to adjust the opacity on and I could just drag on this. It makes it a lot easier than having to click it and go into the effects control, go to the opacity tab. And the problem I have with Premiere and the way it handles this is it's keyframe by default. So if I drag this number down, it's going to set a keyframe. If I later decide I want that slightly higher, well now I have an animation. So the key if you do it this way is to make sure to shut off this keyframing switch which for some reason is on by default. And I like to just do it this way, therefore control K for video, control shift K for audio. The next one I want to talk about is delete tracks. Now if you look at my sequence I have a ton of garbage video tracks and garbage audio tracks. Of course I could right click and hit delete tracks but it's something I do fairly often. So again I'm going to hit command option K and search for delete tracks. And I set it to control option command delete. The reason I use so many modifiers was because it's not something you want to invoke by accident so I just wanted to make sure I was very clearly doing it on purpose. So if I hit OK and I hit command option control delete and now I can hit delete video tracks and delete audio tracks and I have this really nice cleaned up sequence. And the last custom shortcut I want to talk about is the set to frame size. Now if I hit command option K and search for set to frame size, you'll see I hit option command F. And I set that because that was after effects shortcut for fit to frame. Now I didn't use the fit to height or width shortcuts because depending on the size of your image, Premiere will choose which one it wants to do. So if I do it on this one, Command Option F for the color retooled logo, you'll notice it fits it to the height of the frame. If I take a much wider image like the retool.net logo and I hit Command Option F, it fits it to width. So that's why I just went with the After Effects command for fit to frame. And Command Option F is what I chose, but of course you guys could choose anything that you need. Again, this is just something I found myself using really often and I found it helpful to set up a custom shortcut. So I hope you guys enjoyed these shortcuts and I hope you can put them to good use to speed up your workflow. Be sure to check out our new product, Color Retooled, which is a set of looks presets for Premiere Pro CC. A ton of easy presets that you can use in Premiere and Speedgrade CC to quickly edit the look of your clips. Everything from brightness and contrast to vintage effects, to things like vignettes that editors can quickly add to their clips and keep working. Also check out Relink Retooled, our conform tool for Premiere and Final Cut that will let you conform to your QuickTime media of different durations and file names than your original media. You can use it with combinations of tape name, file name, and of course you can use partial tape name and file name combined with metadata like time code and frame rate to help you relink your clips quicker and easier than ever before.